know, but, but it's real life, man. Not in the club yet. I think I'm getting close, though. It's real life. I think it's going to be my turn. Excuse me, let me ask you something. You, when your books came out, you went and did signings. I did, yes. How how is it? Because I, I do signings tomorrow. Yeah, we doing should them? promote it tomorrow. Hold on, I, got the, I, I don't. Well, let's promote it. Twelve thirty tomorrow. Borders on Wall Street. Uh, one hundred Broadway. Did in Manhattan. you do that one? I did not do that one. No, I did. Uh, I did the one at MSG, uh, but it was later. You, I didn't do an, any noon signings. Um, you're famous enough to do them. I wasn't. Um, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm I don't saying, buy that. I, no, no, honestly, that's a tougher one to do, but Jim's a more recognizable guy. It's true. Mm -hmm. um, he's tomorrow, 1230 Borders on Wall Street, and uh, also 7 p.m. Barnes & Noble in Lake Grove, Long Island. Uh, it's great. You're getting two of them done tomorrow, um, both major bookstores. Right, but when, when right you would do it, what? Look, is it weird? It's like great. It, it's cool. I you never sat down it. and signed stuff? I have, but I love not, it, actually. I, I will say the... You connect with everybody that you yeah. know, is a fan of you. The book world, I'm noticing, is a lot different. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a completely different audience, and um, it's not like the, the stand-up crew, and you don't have to be hilarious. I, I, <laughs> no, you just got to fucking I went, sit there and <laughs> yeah, I did... Um, they, they invited me... The book company invited me to uh, the national, like, freaking... Uh, Library Association. I want people go this like, oh, it's huge. <laughs> you got it. It's like go. thousands of people in DC. I'm like, well, what do you? You're a guest speaker. I'm like, all right, well, what do I get? You got to do a half hour, and you know, read from your book. I'm like, I'm not reading from my book. So I'm following a guy, and people are sitting down, listening to him, and he was. I won't say dreadful, but I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. It was a chapter two. It was a cold, windy day and <laughs> under the oak tree. <laughs> uh. And so uh. I went, I'm going to crush this place. So I went up, and I just talked. And within 20 minutes, it was a crowd. And I went, uh, and they said, you're done. I'm like, done. I'm just, just getting started. Just getting started. Yeah, what are you talking about? I'm like, this is the book world? <laughs> Sign me up. I'm, I'm in. Bye bye comedy clubs. I'm going on a storytelling tour. <laughs> so I'm intrigued, and I, I just don't know what to expect. You'll and... you'll pull up to the bookstore. You'll start to worry how many people are there. How long oh, is I'm the already, line? I'm already worried. When you get there, you'll start to look at where does the line start. Um, right. Is that good? Like, where's the table? Like, is that yes. a good place for the line to start? <laughs> no, how right. far is the table? How long is this going to take? Well, if it's quick, I'm going to look stupid. We got to get right. We got to give them the best pointer because it happens to everybody. Oh yeah, you, you're yeah. gonna have one of these book signings where it's sort of a bust, so you're gonna find yourself talking to people a little longer, a little more yes. to make sure the line yeah. never yeah. ends. Get back here! <laughs> right. uh, I, I do that with my DVDs. <laughs> okay, so you know, at the end of the show, I'm like, yeah, so yeah, I started 1989 and. <laughs> DVDs over here, and um, when yeah, we really got to go, Jim. But it was great. <laughs> when we were you. in Boston, we had a CD out that did really well in general. But we did a yeah. signing in downtown Boston that was a major fucking flop. Yeah. And we ended up talking to every person that came up for easily five minutes <laughs> to the point where they're like, look, man, I'm a fan, but I, I got things to exactly. do. You guys are they, needy. <laughs> right. So well, we didn't want the line to end because then right. you're just sitting there with a fucking Sharpie in your hand looking right. like a, 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 a dork. Right. Waiting People for someone go, to come I went in. to the book signing. It was really sad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, we've had that. It was great. We could just we <laughs> sat with him. We took pictures and there was nobody else there. Remember that? It? And then and then you had people going. They went. They got back on the line. And said, "Well, there's," and they had to tell you, "Well, there's no one here, so I'm, I, I might as well uh, come back and get something else signed from you guys." Remember that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They come back around oh, and see the same it, person it was with horrendous. a sticker. Could you sign this? But then you get the uh, ones that are just you're, you feel like a fucking rock star. You're gonna have a few of those, dude. You'll be great. Yeah, at, you're gonna. He'll be well. fucking phenomenal because it, it, you interact with people, which you're great at. You'll take photos because you're fan friendly, and you could you could talk before some some bookstores right. have like a little podium, like uh, Barnes and Noble did. Yeah, but you're, did you're not. only gonna have time to say hi, sign their some book. Some of them I will, and and Come take a quick hair. picture. That's yeah, it because yeah. they're gonna have to move uh, move. They move those lines. Bit. It's worth so. it though, man. Book signings are great. It moves a lot of books. You'll do an independent store. Uh, they probably got you in uh, maybe hunting board, uh, in some place. In uh, you know, I'm surprised you're not in. Uh, I'm surprised he's not going to Jersey or Huntington. I am going to Jersey. I'm going to um, Tom's River. Oh, Ocean County Library. That's oh, that's Thursday, 7 p.m. Ocean County Library in Tom's River, New Jersey. I dude, I was reading the book in between, like while we were talking before. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's fucking great. Damn. 
It really is good. It's because I remember the I whole Chappelle oh. buddies fiasco, and I'm I'm reading it like from Jim's point of view, and it's why unbelievably good. Yeah, why don't yeah. we do this? Take a break, and sure. we'll continue talking about Jim Brewer's book. I'm not high because yeah. we got to talk about the SNL shit, which is amazing in there. And something I want to get into is the spirituality of you. Ooh, I've known you forever. Uh -huh. I didn't know. Uh -huh. I didn't know how deep you go with this God thing. So we'll talk about that a but little I bit don't as well. Need, yeah. No, I know, I know. It's you got like a good take on what, it, though. Yeah. All right, so uh, Whatever, more with Jim yeah. Brewer. Stay there. And now, this is the Opie and Anthony Show on the virus. Serious XM. <laughs> My first Metallica song. This was the one. This was the one that brought me in. This is the first. This is the first one. My friend Phil said, "Listen to this." And you're like, "Oh, this is good now, shit." Yeah, and that's what happened. Now yeah. you're a hardcore Metallica fan. Do yeah. You, uh, where are you at with the Black Album? Because a lot of hardcore fans Black like... Black Album? As in uh, you know, Sad But True and all, all that? that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Unforgiven and uh, Wherever I, I May Roam. I love... I think Sad But True is one of the greatest songs ever put out. Fuck right? yeah. Yeah. Wherever Their I May Roam is right, too, right wherever behind I may that, room too. Is oh. one of the best lyrics for road... I love where I, I, I'll redefine anywhere. Some people are just like, though, the Black Album, that's when they sold, sold out, man! Sold <laughs> well, that's a great album. It's, it's a, a great album. It's an great album. album. I love. I love the last song, um, um, "Struggle Within," which got no airplay. That's one of my yeah. favorite songs. Struggle Within. Struggle. That I love that song. <laughs> I love this the song new right album. Here. This is great. This is. We're gonna go in there. We're gonna take no shit. <laughs> You want to play rough? We'll show yeah. them rough. This is shit that's got to be blaring from yeah. helicopters. Right, you're oh, you're fucking in missiles are just flying. You got your flag and you're on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, this is when freedom reigns. <laughs> to the enemy! <laughs> Take your shirts off. <laughs> now, now you're running across the fields. Turn this part up. Here they go. Go. What? Now the battle begins and he just beat the shit out of him blindside. I don't know what happened here. <laughs> oh my god, you're taking over! Giant armies colliding in right. the middle of the field. The big Lord of the Rings yeah, scene. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Release the prisoners! <laughs> 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 That was the best scene ever. Release your prisoners. He starts tossing their heads. Yeah, that guy is fucked up. That guy fucked up now. His eyes all droopy. Release your prisoners. Fucking Metallica. Oh, nice. Yeah. So yeah, no. I, what are those I, guys up to? You know what I love? I think mean, they're torn. Torn, 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 again? torn. They're all in Europe and there and this yeah. and that. I like. Um, you got a Lars story in the book. Yeah, you never heard that story. That one I didn't hear before. No. You never heard the knapsack story? Nope. <laughs> the knapsack. Are you kidding me? You want to tell it on the show? It's this up to you. This is. This is hilarious. L Lars. First of all, I. Lars is the most intense. Like you want to find a rock star, <laughs> it's Lars. Lars has got he he's just his intent. You see where the the intensity comes from. He's got that intensity, dude. I'm ready to take over the world right now. I've <laughs> I've had these conversations where he's like, <laughs> where it would just be me and him. He's like me and fucking you right now. We'll take over. The, let's fucking do it. We'll start the <laughs> revolution right here, right here. And he gets me hopped up. <laughs> he gets me hopped up. Um, this was years ago. You know what? My wife was pregnant. All right? So y you can understand that. Oh, she's, mm -hmm. she's pregnant. And uh, I'm going through that whole little fluffy babies on the way stage. Mm -hmm. And Lars gives a call. So, God, this is like ni eight, 98, 98, something like that, 99 maybe. And he goes, um, dude, let's... What are you doing this tonight? And I said, I'm playing down the village. Let's fucking hang out. And 
I'm going to meet up with some friends. It's going to be great. And so we go down. We go to the cellar. He watches me at the cellar. We then go downstairs to the uh, bar at the bottom of the comedy cellar. I'm the sorry. Boston, you mean? I mean Boston. The Boston. We go up. I do a spot at Boston. And then uh, we go to the bar downstairs. And when we're downstairs, now, on the way over, we're in a ca- we cabbed it, and some kid from NYU left his knapsack with all his books and notebooks, and I felt awful for them. All my nieces and nephews are in college, and I know how much they spend on these books and all that. So, you know what? I'll be a nice guy. <laughs> how cool is be? A guy from Saturday Live is going to send him back his books. And, well, this is a thorn in, Lauren's, uh, in, in uh, Lars's ass from the minute I get it. From the minute I get you, dude, what are you doing with the fucking nap? Get rid of the fucking knapsack. It's ridiculous. You look like a fag walking around with this fucking knapsack. So I'm, I'm, I'm walking around with this thing. I said, I'm going to give it back. Why does the knapsack bother you? It's fucking stupid. Fuck, <laughs> fuck that, that guy. He's, he's irresponsible. Fuck him. It'll teach him a lesson. So we're now downstairs. Now, you know, I'm like, what a great guy, hero. I've hung out with him a couple of times. Well, it was the first time I really partied, partied out in public with him. And um, this kid comes up. He obviously knows who Lars is. And he's walking. He's like, dude, can I have a cigarette? Can I bum a cigarette <laughs> off you? That's his approach to the yeah. hot chick. <laughs> hey, can I bum a cigarette off you, Mr. Rockstar? Lars turns around and he, he goes, <laughs> dude. Did it ever fucking occur to you that sometime tonight before your evening started, you would f- fucking be engaging in cigarettes? No, you, I work hard for these fucking <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> and I'm going. I'm and, the, and the kids look at him like, Are you, like, what's your problem, man? What's your problem? So <clears throat> I, I'm like, Lars, it, it's cool. He's like, dude, it's not cool. Don't fucking dude, go buy your own cigarettes. Whoa! This is, <laughs> Jesus, that's intense. This is not what I did. I've uh, never yeah. seen that reaction from him. Someone asking for a cigarette. So I mean, he must get it all the time or whatever. So yeah, yeah. I said, let's get out of here. Let's, because now this kids with like eight friends, and they went from Metallica rocks to, dude, we'll take you. <laughs> yeah, we'll take, take you, you little punk, and, ass, yeah. and who, and then and, and that fag with the knapsack. We'll take him too. <laughs> <laughs> so we leave. He did, We do a shot or whatever, and we leave out in the street. He tears the knapsack off my back. I said, what are you doing? He tosses it across the street, (laughs) hits some chick in the leg, and it opens up, and the bags go all over. And he's walking down the village going like this. There's your fucking knapsack, huh? Huh? What's wrong with that? Are we hanging fucking knapsack, huh? Huh? So we start heading to 6th Avenue. And we get 6th Avenue, and there's a busy road on a Saturday night. And it's, you know, it's like 1 in the morning, whatever, and cars, have, he doesn't wait for the green light. <laughs> he starts crossing the street, and cars are, like they're screeching, and they pull him from He starts banging their hood. What the fuck, huh? You fucking want to hang out, huh? Get out of the fucking car, huh? I'm like, Lars, what are you doing? Chill out. And he keeps getting in my face. Are we hanging or what? So now he, like a rock star, he he's walking over parked cars, like, Stepping on the trunk, walking oh, over man. the tops and the hoods, and then hopping off like this is it. We're good. I went, I don't know if I can live up to this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I fun. talk a great game, but I don't know if I can live up to this That's status. A whole other story, yeah. This is a whole different beast. Yeah. I've never seen I can't. So he brings me to this private club, and um, this is when it was we go to this club. And it was like, it's on 7th Avenue somewhere. I don't know where. And you have to go up the stairs. It's really dark. <laughs> and and they know who he is. And we get up there. And if a bomb went off in this room, half the music industry would be <laughs> collapsed. Really? Wow. It was Dave Matthews, the one of the Backstreet Boys, the guy who wears the cowboy hat, which Backstreet Boys back then were huge. huge. Right. Um Owls and Chains, a couple guys from Owls Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Gwyneth Paltrow, um, and there were like two other people that you look at and you go, oh my God, that's... Yeah. That's like... I that's, know that guy. Yeah. The, that guy's like the queen of, of fucking Wales. <laughs> the guy's <laughs> a queen of Wales. <laughs> and it was very surreal, very dark. Had a, had a creepy vibe. And I just remember, um, I went, you know what, man, I... 
I'm going to head home. <laughs> <laughs> Lars's face was like, I just left an orgy. He's like, what? I fucking, 